Hello! In this video, I will pull you deeper into the push. But before we start with the process, I recommend that you watch the video about push and pull, which will explain how this two-piece puzzle comes together and why it's so crucial in the judo playing. And I recommend that you watch the video about um, frequent breathing on the drone, which is also very important. It is about the quantitative uh, side of uh, the push. And here we will do the qualitative side. So what is the essence of the push? Why push is maybe not the perfect name for it. So you see, let's start with the pull a little bit. The pull are the mouth sounds. And the basic pull exercises are uh, developed from this derived uh, from this basic circular breathing where you take that movement and make it very very harsh and there we also found the tooth you can um, watch that video as well because it will give you the counterbalance of what we're doing today so when you take the essence of push, where would you extract it from? What is more um, familiar you know, or the most familiar phenomenon with pushing? That would be the bounce breathing, which is often explained as you're droning and like uh, laughing, like ha <laughs> ha, pushing from the stomach. So, and in that pulse of breath, your mouth stretches in all sides a little bit and your tongue does some small movements and it's enough that you can inhale at the end of that <laughs> you inhale um very naturally because your diaphragm comes high up and when it contracts you inhale but it comes into a perfect position because the abdominal muscles push it up and then when you inhale it just goes down and it's like um at a perfect spot where it's very, very natural for a diaphragm to go into contraction. Um, but when you take that movement that <laughs> and you emphasize it, you know, you, you uh, make it a little bit grotesque, you get this very, very short, very abrupt pulse of air. And that is the real push. So it's not really pushing, it should be more like a bullet. It's this. Now, to get that um, attack of push, you need to do one secret thing. It took me quite a lot of time to understand that I was doing it and that when I'm showing it, I'm not showing it because I, I wasn't aware of it. It was maybe five, six, seven, eight, nine years ago where I was teaching a very good player and I was showing him the push because probably we're doing a stinker room or something like that. And his pushes, they just didn't come through properly. They weren't shaped well, you know, they didn't have this short rising time and this, boof, this punch. They were more like boom, and always slow. And so I was observing, but why is it so different, you know, when he does it and when I do it? And I realized that actually I push first with my body closed. And at that moment, I termed it pre-compression. So pre-compression is rising of pressure inside the body before you release it. So to get the real push, this... <laughs> you need to have high pressure before air goes out of your body. So I would say that the master didgeridoo player is a master of her or his inner body pressures. And this is a very good example of it. It's like you creating your own back pressure. So the feeling is like you want to laugh, burst in, into laughing, but you are not allowed to because you're at an inappropriate place. It happened to me so many times. And uh, you go, you know, the, the bell is pushing the air out, but you're stopping it in the area from your neck and uh, further. And that is this, it creates this higher, higher, higher pressure in the body. The same feeling comes when you're sneezing, but this is very short. You know, the stoppage, this uh, blocking of air is quite short, so you don't know this. I mean, it feels like in the sneezing, there is just, you inhale, you exhale, but it's not. There is this moment where you actually contract against yourself and then you just release it. And that is the feeling of the real push. It's just a release. 
Okay. However, to make it work, your lips have to be in the right embouchure. And for this uh, drone to happen, you need to have your lips closed like quite inwards. So the back of your lips, the inner side of the lips, the soft side of your lips, they have to close. So your embouchure has to be quite thick. Otherwise you will get a tooth, you will get this. And you don't want that, you want this. Okay. The attack is the most important thing. So let's just focus on that. This is what you need to get. It's quite simple once you get it. If you're naturally a puller, this will feel unnatural to you, but you can train yourself that it is natural. It's a little bit like if you're a puller, you're walking more with your left leg. And if you're a pusher, you're walking more with your right leg or the other way around. And you want to walk parallelly with your both legs, you know? Um, so there is no, no way around it. You have to learn the push and you have to learn the pull. And for the real push, you have to learn the pre-compression. The pre-compression will allow um, this great force of air to come very, very suddenly. And then you can extend it if you want. For example, in instinct room, I don't just do a short push like this. I do extension. But that extension is maybe now something that could trick you into um, slowness, you know, but the start has to be sudden, it has to be abrupt. It will give you then the right elasticity to recover. And um, that elasticity will allow also for the breath to come in very, very quickly and very efficiently. And if you don't build up the elasticity by pressure, this magic will be gone. So the higher level that you do player is very much about how you handle your elasticity through pressure because pressure changes your elasticity of the body. So your first exercise should be actually like this. You come to the position where you want to blow, where you want to push the air, but you stop. And then you first you feel that the pressure is coming and that you're blocking it and then you just release it. So that's the first step. It might not sound perfect, and this is not a perfect sounding sound. It sounds a little bit dirty, a little bit off. Um, but that's not the point. The point is that you need to snap with that ear. It has to be not okay? That's very important. Um, once you get that with a stop, and I don't just go over that step, do that step. It's very important. Many people just go into blowing, just like trying as many times. This is not about that. It's not the quantitative uh, side of the push, it's the qualitative side of the push. So you come, you focus, and then you release it. Now, you shouldn't uh, keep that contraction too long because it will uh, cause pain, like ear will mm, struggle a little bit to get outside of your uh, channel, breathing channel, and you will feel a little bit of like you might feel a little bit of burning in the throat. If that happens, it just means that you have to relax sooner. Okay, you, you contract, relax, contract, relax. That's very, very common for ditch playing. So the first step would be you stop. The next step is just doing the basic push. And you make sure that you get this uh, base, that you're not going so You don't have to overdo it. Just notice that it's and that it's not. That's very important that it's sudden and not slow, sloppy. Once you can do a very nice hammering of air, then you uh, can extend it to get a little bit more of body into that into that sound. It doesn't matter how you form the tail of that sound. You will form the body and probably you will form the, the tail. When I um, 
play stinky room i do this doom d where doom presents this pre-compressed push d this is the extension which gives this uh feeling of bass right so it's like punch bass doom d doom d doom da doom da so i play with very slight harmonic change of the end but it is noticeable if you pay attention and actually i would end this short lesson with um, uh, the synchro room and your third uh, step would be that you find some recording of synchro room and just follow the beginning um, where it's very very simple there's just the push this doom d doom d if you want to follow later it follows by two drum sounds then it follows by takawaka which is played a little bit laid back mm, but this doom d is the push that I recommend that you try. And you need to be able to do it for like five minutes without losing the quality. If you're losing power or, or if you're losing uh, quality of sound, this comes usually together, it's probably because you're not pre-compressing properly. Pre-compression will save you. I mean, love will save you, but pre-compression will save you as well. And you need to pre-compress release more than push push so the only tricky tricky part is that that pre-compression is very very short you know i didn't um time it but it's maybe one twentieth of a of a second or something like that one tenth of a second mm, okay i leave you with that and next time we'll do some rhythmical exploration of that Porsche universe. Um, if you don't know what to do with your life or you do know, please subscribe and like the video. Thank you. Spiral out. Keep teaching. Okay.